Until now, this story has been Top Secret. Top Secret, the new NBC presentation starring gorgeous Ilona Massey as the Baroness Karen Gazer in transcribed dramas of international intrigue and espionage before and during World War II. Assignment one, night train to Berlin. A story until now, top secret. We have crossed the Swiss frontier. We are in Germany now. Herr Garben, I will not talk. When we get off the train, you will be given to the Gestapo. They will break you. They won't. They will. Your fingernails, your knuckles, your beautiful white teeth, that golden hair. I promise you, your hair will be gray as ashes before the treatment is over. I will not talk. I will never talk. <laughs> How do I come to be locked in a compartment with a Gestapo man on the night express from Geneva to Berlin? It is very simple. A long time ago, a man, a very wonderful, brave man, offered me a job and I took it. Baroness, he said, remember this. In espionage, you receive no credit in success, no protection in danger, no recognition, even in death. If you have to steal, steal. But if you are caught, you will go to jail as a thief. If you have to kill, kill. But if you are caught, you will hang. And always remember, Baroness, your first mistake will be your last. I accepted the conditions. I became an intelligence agent, a spy. I forgot I was a baroness. I forgot my home in Vienna. I forgot everything except the fight against these animals. I got a job as a manicurist in the Hotel Adlon in Berlin. It is surprising how much one can pick up in a beauty parlor. And I do not mean uh, tips. Your other hand now, Frau von Klug. Oh, careful, Fräulein. Do not scratch my ring with your file. My husband sent it to me from Africa. Oh. And that night, I would send a message. Colonel General Hans von Klug is in Africa. For days, I hear nothing. Then all he says in his letter is how cold it is. Your husband is fighting a war, Frau Richter. He's busy. Send me my fur-lined field coat, he says. So I wrote, send me a Russian saber. <laughs> and that night, my message would say, 3rd Panzer Division is on the eastern front in Russia. North sector, where it is cold. Day after day, I manicured the hands of these fat German women. I was waiting. I was waiting for a message from a man called simply the farmer. His trademark was a plain white visiting card with a single grain of wheat glued in the center. I had been told that I would be contacted in a way that no German would ever speak. In a way that no German would ever speak. Last Friday, after the manicure shop closed, I went to sit in the tear garden to enjoy the sunshine and the fresh air. As I sat in the long park watching the children and the birds, I took out a cigarette. Good afternoon, Fraulein. Perhaps you'd like a match. I'm quite capable of lighting my own cigarette. Mm, you look capable of practically anything. I beg your pardon? Even of calling a flat foot and turning me in. Uh, calling a what? A uh, flat foot, you know, like Dick Tracy. Do you, do you know Dick Tracy? Mm-hmm. And little Abner and Daisy May. It's nice to meet someone who knows them. I have a calling card right from Dogpatch, sort of, uh, farmerish. May I see? Perhaps you could describe it first. Plain white. Yes. 
For the grain of wheat? Glued in the center. Across the street from the entrance to the park, there is a small tea room. Do you know it? Yes. Table in the corner behind the pillars. Can you be there in 15 minutes? That's all I know, Fraulein, what I've told you. The farmer said you'd know what to do. Well, those his exact words. I memorized them. Repeat the message again. Yeah, he said, G left Lisbon by air yesterday, arrived at Hotel Metropole in Geneva tonight. I Has compartment 10 on car 806, Geneva Berlin Express, leaving Geneva, midnight Saturday, stop him. And that's all. I see. Is there anything you want me to do? Yes. There's a flight on Swiss Air leaving Templehof in two hours. Get me a reservation. Uh, and can you get me some Swiss money? Uh, yes, Fraulein. As much as you can. Then telephone Geneva and make a reservation for me at the Hotel Metropole in the name of uh, Karen Gabor. Yes, Fraulein. I think that is all. Perhaps I'm not supposed to ask questions, but who was meant by G? His name is Garvin. I've never seen him. I only know that at this moment, he's the most dangerous man in the world. He's smuggling something into Germany that... Uh, Smuggling what, Fraulein? Well, it is not necessary for you to know. Do not ask me any more questions. Get me as much money as you can and meet me at the airport in two hours. Later that night, I was flying over Switzerland. So peaceful, so rich. So convenient as a place where enemies can meet and dine and drink together. After I landed in Geneva, I took a taxi to a dark little shop in the Rue de Petit Cloche, the street of the Little Bell. All this had been planned for weeks. I knew exactly what we needed. I knew what would be ready. I knew that the shoemaker would be waiting. Come in. Are you alone? Yes, come in. Were you followed? No. Are you positive? Yes. Are my shoes ready? Come with me, child, in the back. I have been expecting you for weeks. I have been waiting for weeks. I saw. Our little German is in Geneva, eh? He's catching the midnight express to Berlin tomorrow night. But we are ready for him, are we not? I do hope so. Ah. Here are your shoes. Try them on. The instrument is in the heels. Oh, it is good I am skilled in precision work. My years in the watch factory. Ah, are they comfortable? Yes, they are fine. Now, bring the heels together. Like this? You feel something, no? Yes, I feel a kind of tingling sensation. Ah, observe, child. I take off my watch. I place it on the floor. Ah, stand with your heels on either side of the watch. Like this? Yes. Now listen. You hear? It's amazing. Now I take the watch away. Like this. The sound stops. Oh, it's perfect. In your right heel is a very high frequency shortwave transmitter. So small. Ah, I have made them smaller than that to fit a wristwatch. In your other heel is a receiver hooked up to a circuit sensitive to radioactive substances. My watch has a radium dial. Yes. When you stand with the radium watch dial between your heels, the transmitter activates the receiver. <laughs> you feel a small electrical impulse and hear the beep. You are a walking Geiger counter. And you are a genius. Uh, and also my very dear friend. Is there anything else? Yes. I will go now to the Metropole Hotel. I have a reservation under the name of Karen Gabor. Karen Gabor? Yes. I want an operative. Your best. Young enough to be strong and old enough to be wise. I have the very man, 30, an Englishman and speaks perfect German, resourceful, fearless. Have him get me a ticket on the Geneva Berlin Express tomorrow night. Our friend will be in compartment 10, car 806. If possible, I want compartment 9 or compartment 11. And if that is impossible? Well, then at least in the same car. Car 806. That is right. Anything else? Have him bring the tickets to the Hotel Metropole. And tell him to use the service entrance. I have something else for you, child. Wait a moment. I, I made these myself. Sugar lumps? Yes, individually wrapped. Just like in America. 
sugar with enough cyanide to kill in 30 seconds. I will give you uh, six cubes. They may be handy. Who knows? Who knows indeed? Thank you, dear friend. And uh, have your man bring my ticket to the hotel at once. <laughs> Come in. Thank you. Who sent you? A shoemaker. Can you identify yourself? Here is my card, madame. Plain white, as you see, with a grain of wheat in the center. Have you my ticket to Berlin? Car 806, compartment 11. Geneva Berlin Express, tomorrow night at midnight. Good. Sit down. There is much for you to do. Thank you. Six weeks ago, on our side of the ocean, three German agents stole a sample of a new atomic fuel made from uranium-235. Mm, yes, sir. The shoemaker told me. They also obtained the only copy of a formula on how the fuel may be used and controlled. In some way, I do not know how. Two ounces of this metal reached Lisbon. But, but it must be incredibly difficult to transport. One can't just carry radioactive material in one's hand, can one? It is being transported in a block of lead, nine inches square. Yesterday, it reached Geneva. I was told by the farmer that it is in a suitcase, a plain leather suitcase. Go on. The suitcase is in the possession of a Gestapo agent named Garben. He's staying here at the hotel, and tomorrow night he leaves for Berlin. Are you sure he has the metal? Naturally, we can be positive. We only know that if the metal and that formula reaches Germany. Our armies never will. Exactly. What do you want me to do? Be on the train tomorrow night. Basel on the Swiss border is the only stop the Geneva Berlin Express makes, isn't it? All right. It's dangerous for me to be that near Germany. I, are you afraid? I was involved in the assassination attempt on the life of Field Marshal Goering. Oh. My picture is posted in every railway station in Germany. I'm sorry. That's all right. I have a Geiger counter built into the heels of my shoes. I will get on the train early, go directly to Garben's compartment, and when he arrives, I will pretend it is the man. Uh-huh. I will try to plant my heels next to his luggage. You will be on the station platform outside. If I get a reaction, I will, I will signal you. Well, uh, how? Let me think. What shall it be? Something you can see easily through the train window. Um, will you be wearing a hat? Yes. If he hasn't the metal, take off your hat. And if he has, I'll leave it on. Right. The hat is wide-brimmed gray felt. You'll see it easily. So, no metal, take off your hat. Mm -hmm. And ride through to Berlin, having missed the boat completely. Yes. And then I won't get on the train. Right. Uh, perhaps we should have another operative, uh, someone to pose as a passenger and ride through to Berlin with you. That's up to the shoemaker. Anything else? Just be standing outside the window of compartment 10, car 806, tomorrow night at 10 minutes to 12. I got a good look at Herr Garben the next day in the lobby of the hotel. He was carrying a small square suitcase. He sat quite near me with the suitcase beside him on the floor. Then he left. The heavy wool carpet had a mark on it. A square mark in the nap. It was a small suitcase to be so heavy. Unless... Unless it contained a piece of lead nine inches square. At the station that night, I got on the train early and went to Garvin's compartment in car 806. Through the window, I could see my Englishman standing in the shadow of a pillar, his eyes watching my hat. It drew closer and closer to midnight, and still Garben did not arrive. I could hear the station master calling the departure. Excuse me, Fräulein, but I think you have made a mistake. Apartment is mine. Oh, but that is impossible. I know I'm number 10. Perhaps I could see your ticket. Oh, certainly. I have it in my purse. <laughs> if I can ever find it. You know how much useless equipment a woman carries. <laughs> it must be here somewhere. There is no hurry, Fräulein. Please sit down. I'll find it in a moment. While you look, Fräulein... This compartment is stifling. May I open the window? Please do. 
I got warm running for the train. Excuse me. There. That's better. <laughs> I shall never find it if you stand and watch me. Please put your luggage on the floor beside mine and sit down. Thank you, Fraulein. There. I wonder if... Uh... What's that? Oh, what, what's what? That noise. I heard nothing. I could have sworn I heard something like... Oh. I should not run for trains. <laughs> the ringing comes in my ears. <laughs> oh, your oh. hat, watch out. <laughs> A sudden gust of wind swept in the open window. My hat had a wide brim. The wind caught it and blew it off my head. It rolled to Garden Street. This was supposed to have been our signal. If he hadn't the metal, I was to take off my hat. Outside on the station platform, I saw my English friend smile at me and then turn and walk quickly away. He thought I had signaled him that the metal was not there. In two seconds, our plan had been shattered. I was alone with Garvin and the uranium. The next stop was Basel and the German border. You are delightful. <laughs> Completely enchanting. Have you forgiven me for my stupid mistake about your compartment? You have made the evening perfect. Of course I forgive you. Oh, it is late. I must get some sleep. Nonsense. It is not often I have such pleasure. A woman like you, beautiful, charming, witty, traveled. Please, stay. Uh, do you suppose we could get some coffee? Of course. I'll ring. Uh, look, a friend of mine gave me a special treat today. Sugar, six whole lumps. We shall have a feast. Oh, I haven't had sugar in coffee for weeks. Will they have any cream? We can hope for the best. <laughs> Come in. You rang, sir? Yeah. It is coffee for two. And uh, have you chicken? No, sir. Canned beef? Then beef, but thin sandwiches with coffee for two. Yes, sir. What are you smiling at? The coffee, sir. It is very bad. Airsats. We make it from anything. Grain, wheat. <laughs> we buy our coffee from farmers. From farmers? Yes, Fraulein. Would you prefer tea? No, I'll try the coffee. I do. Hurry, please. Yes, sir. At once. Uh, before we have our coffee, will you excuse me? I will freshen up. My hands are filthy from the dust. I shall miss you, Baroness. But I shall also look forward to your return. Oh, I'm only going next door to my compartment. Even that is too far. I won't be a moment. Waiter. Yes? In my compartment, quickly, number 11. Inside, quickly. Yes, Fraulein. Who are you? The farmer sent me. How? Through the shoemaker. Have you a card? White, with a grain of wheat. Do you know about this? Yes. You want his suitcase? Yes. Thank God you are here. I had a signal that went wrong. My head blew off. Has he the metal? Yes. What are you going to do? I have some of the shoemaker's sugar. I'll put it in his coffee. Supposing he doesn't take sugar. I asked him. He said he did. I, I had better get out of here. Uh, bring us the coffee and come back in half an hour. We'll have to do something with his buddy. When do we get to customs? Oh, less than that. About 20 minutes. Then come back in 15. We'll have to get his buddy off the train before the customs man come aboard. Oh, Somebody is ringing for me. I have got to go. All right. Be careful. Yes. All right, all right. Wait up. <gasps> yes, sir. Come in here, please. So someone is ringing, sir. Come I... in. Oh. Yes. I would shoot you. Come in. Yes, sir. That's it. Now, shut the door behind you. I am not a fool, young man. I know about the farmer. I know about the wheat. I have not been in the Gestapo eight years for nothing. Question? 
Who is she? I don't know. Is she with you? No, I swear it. I have never seen her before in my life. I think you are lying. Pull down the bird. What? The bird. The upper bird. Pull it down. I, I don't understand. Pull it down. Yes, sir. It speaks. I... Hurry. Good. My friend, I have a silencer on my gun. The train is noisy. I have not much time. The Baroness will be back in a moment. If you tell me the truth, you can go. If you don't, I will shoot you, shove your body into the bird and close it. Now you have two seconds to decide. I swear, I have never seen her, never. You're lying. No, no. <laughs> what on earth is that waiter doing with our coffee? Oh, he's probably busy. He won't be long. Oh, they are coming into Boston. But doubtless he's waiting until after the conference men get on. Uh, are we at Basel already? It is the company, Baroness, that gives wings to time. Will we have to get out? No, the conference men get on the train. Not even a breath of air? They only stop for a moment. I, um, um, some fresh air would do me... You seem very anxious to get off the train, Baroness. Are you nervous about something? Nervous? Uh, why, why should I be? Smuggling something, perhaps? Do I look like a smuggler? Appearances are deceptive. What were you doing in Switzerland? Skiing. For long? A couple of weeks. I had a wonderful vacation. It must be nice to have a vacation. For years, I have not had the time. Why is the possibility? The customs men, excuse me, darling. Why is the possibility? Thank you, sir. Passport, please. Certainly. Ah, oh, Herr Garben. This is an honor. I trust you have a pleasant journey. Stamp it, will you? Certainly. Dark shirt. Now, madame, your passport, if you please. No, no, it will not be necessary to look at the luggage if you are with Herr Garben. Uh, just your passport. Here it is. Thank you. Yeah, it's quite in order. And next time, Baroness, stay longer and fly into our beautiful Switzerland that one night and leave the next reflex on our hospitality. Both to our good Abend, Herr Garben. Good Abend. Sit down, Baroness. I, I, I think I should go to bed. Sit down. You are on German soil now. I can have you locked in this compartment until we reach Berlin. Good. I am glad you're going to be reasonable. So cruelty we will not resort to. The arm I will not twist. Guns I shall not threaten with, but you will answer me quickly and truthfully. I haven't the slightest idea of what you're talking. You fly in last night, take the train out tonight. You say you were skiing for two weeks. Why do you lie? I'm merely traveling to Berlin. I want the rest of the night to sleep. When did you ski? Then your passport says... Give me that passport. You have no right to... Then your passport says... Ah, yes. Exit Templehof Airport last night, re-entry Basel tonight. <laughs> when did you ski, Baroness? I'm sure only a very special assignment would call for such haste. Is that assignment myself? I refuse to talk. When we get off the train, you will be given to the Gestapo. They will break you. They won't. They will. Your fingernails, your knuckles, your beautiful white teeth, that golden hair. I promise you your hair will be gray as ashes before that treatment is over. I will not talk. I will never talk. Baroness, the next stop is barely. And you are alone. Your friend the Veda is dead. <gasps> His body is shut in my upper berth. No. That startles you, doesn't it? Is there a tremor in those beautiful eyes, Baroness? Is it terror? Is it... There is no need of terror, Baroness. Everything can be avoided if you answer a few questions. Their names. Who are you? How did you know what I was carrying? Who is the farmer? Their names. Who are you? How did you know what I was carrying? Who is the farmer? Their names. Who are you? Who is the Berlin, all night long, 
I had lost. There was no escape. The Gestapo would break me. They can break anybody. I remembered what I had been told. If you have to kill, kill. But what weapon? I had no weapon. I could not kill him with my bare hands. And then, in the early morning, when we were slowing down to stop at Central Station in Berlin, the train jerked sharply. The car lurched. The weight of the body in the upper berth caused it to switch and suddenly downward. For perhaps five seconds, Garden was dazed, but it was long enough. I found my weapon. So harmless. So simple. Something only a woman would carry. I held it in front of his eyes. I please, in the name of... Don't! Don't say his holy name, Herr Garden. Say rather in the name of my husband, whom your troops hung head downwards outside our house in Vienna until the blood burst in his brain. No! No! I was suddenly very calm. I stepped over his body, took the heavy suitcase, and got off the train. The farmer himself met me. The metal and the formula are now on our side of the ocean. And I? I am back at my job as a manicurist in the Adlon Hotel. When I need a manicure, Fräulein, I always come to you. <laughs> you are so expert. No one else can shape my nails like this. Well, it is the files, Frau von Blue. I get them specially made. And very long and thin and the best steel. They have many uses. Many uses, Holla. Yes. If a man molested you, uh, a nail file in the eyes would be... Holla. Uh, uh, would you like to try this new polish? It's called Blood Red. <laughs> have just heard Ilona Massey starring in the new NBC presentation, Top Secret. And here she is to tell you about next week's show. Next week's story concerns a theft by a dead man who never died. A seamstress who didn't talk. And a lichen begleiter, a corpse carrier. It is a story that has been up till now, Top Secret. <laughs> Top Secret is directed and produced by Harry W. Junkin. The program in part transcribed was purely fictional and was written by Alan Sloan. Featured with Miss Massey tonight was Carl Emery as Herr Garbin. Others in the cast were Leon Janney, Bill Lipton, Francis Bethencourt, Paul Levitt, and Connie Lemke. The music was composed and conducted by Dr. Roy Shields. This is Fred Collins speaking. Thursday night, radio listeners can hear for themselves a startling yet authentic dramatization of the step-by-step -step solution of an actual crime. Dragnet tells the story of your police force at work and in action. Dragnet is taken from police files of a great American city, and NBC is proud to present it to you for your pleasure. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. Mm -hmm.